Cup final saw Hawthorne pitted against North. He kicks into the centre to Jarman. Look at that pass off the left. Brereton's got a player wide. Tony Hall into an open goal goes Tony Hall. And he has kicked the goal. And while the Hawks were far too good, victory came at a price. Greg Deere out for the season with a knee. Greg Deere, and he does not look too good at all. That's a knee, Don, by the look of it. He's holding that right knee. Well, Peter Wilson was saying it looks like a meaty on the cruciate. So, um, probably an operation on Friday to see what's happened and um, we can take it from there. So, it really looks as if you'll miss a season. Well, he said, more or less, yeah. That's it. Yeah. There'll be no football until next year. That's right, yeah. Despite that setback, the Hawks were still able to celebrate before starting the home and away series, and that's coming up shortly. With the Fosters Cup win behind them, the Hawks journeyed to unknown territory, football park, and an unknown but very parochial crowd. And they were shell-shocked. 91 for the Adelaide Crows, high towards full forward. Punched away, another goal coming up. Not only that, as a result of clashing with Chris McDermott, Dermot Brereton was suspended for five weeks. Another team to get a shock in round one was Melbourne, journeying to Perth. The Dees could manage only two goals for the day, as the Eagles signalled to one and all they were going to be a force to be reckoned with. One week, two goals from Melbourne, the next, 27, as they hammered the Lions by 131 points. Outnumbered them. The kick towards the pocket. Here's Beveridge. Stevenson's going to have to make some ground. He won't get there, and Beveridge kicks another one. Still Carlton was the next club to journey to Football Park, and the Blues came away with the points, due largely to a week of homework by coach David Parkin. And that should be it. The guy came here last week because I didn't know the players that well. I mean, I knew a lot of them, but not really how they played. And uh, I think that's one thing Hawthorne didn't do, they probably will do, and other clubs will do now, is they'll have to sit on the, the four prime movers that the Crows have if they're going to compete. If one of the most exciting games of the season was down at Moorabbin and the round four clash between reigning premiers Collingwood and the improving St Kilda. At the end of the day, scores were dead level. Ivy to kick it and he has missed this level. It's level. In the same round, Billy Brownless took on the Bears at the Gabba and won. He runs into an open goal and bangs it through. Gareth John will long remember the Sydney's round five clash with Essendon. The big man was outed for the season with a severe throat injury after tangling with Essendon big man Simon Madden. Footscray produced the upset of round five, toppling Hawthorne by 11 points. And the seal of the Brian Will as he comes in for number five. While on Anzac Day, a young man named Darren Cuthbertson kicked his second successive bag of seven as Melbourne proved too strong for Collingwood. Goes towards full forward Lockett. What a dream start. Round seven saw the return of two of St Kilda's stars, Tony Lockett and Nicky Winmar. By round eight, only two sides were left undefeated, Essendon and the West Coast Eagles. By the end of round eight, the Eagles stood alone at the top of the ladder. Under the Eagles. While Ooh, Essendon's injury list three. continued to grow. Kevin said sure he'll be wanting those extra interchange again. Sure will. Great performance of full forward play this by the spearhead. He takes two steps, he kicks it. Goal! Ten goals to Jeff Hogg. What a great performance. Richmond and Jeff Hogg, who booted ten, gave us the Mother's Day massacre as the Tigers mauled Collingwood by 57 points. What a great kick. It's a goal. The record books were out in round nine as Tony Lockett and St Kilda went to Sydney for the third successive week. Lockett booted double figures and the Saints were on a high. Hawthorne's Paul Hudson was also amongst the goals. He booted nine in round ten as the Hawks proved too strong for Collingwood. Platt in front of the pack. Getting better as the game goes on, John Platt. Paul drops a mark. You don't see that in the month of Sundays. Hudson again! Number nine! And the Lions have fond memories of round 10. They broke through for their first win of the season over the enigmatic Geelong. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1991 AFL Premiership season. Let's now have a look at the four other matches being played today and some crucial ones too. Out at Windy Hill, 
Melbourne have done well there in recent times and they're continuing. They lead by 16 points, 6 4 to 3 6. The West Coast Eagles holding a determined Richmond, 9 6 to 5 5. Collingwood took a big punt on themselves this week and it's not paying off at the moment. North are 9 11. Collingwood are 8 5. And Hawthorne and St Kilda, a close one at Prince's Park. Hawthorne leading 6 10 to 6 5. I mentioned that big game out at Windy Hill. A reminder, of course, we've got a special replay immediately after this game. So don't move from your lounge room because that's going to be a ripper game as well as this one. Essendon and Melbourne coming up later on in the afternoon. We'll take a break. Be back with more action shortly here at Cadinia Park. Welcome back to Cadinia Park. Let's go down to the boundary line. I don't know whether it's the man from Snowy River or Inspector Gadget. Max? Which one are you? I don't know, Sandy. Actually, this coat used to belong to Polly Farmer. I think they found it in the basement. Now, Graham Corn's fairly desperate at this point of time. He wants his players to start manning up and start controlling the ball. He claims they allowed the Cats to get right back uh, and take control in that second quarter. And obviously, he needs to do something about Billy Brownless. Maybe Danny Hughes is a little slow. Coach Malcolm Blight. Well, big reps. He's pretty happy at this point of time. But he made it clear that Adelaide has got the wind in the last quarter, so do everything. Thank you, Max. In fact, the move has been made. Nigel Smart now has the job of Brownless. Geelong kicking with the breeze as we start the second half. Burke to Simpson. That's the way it was in the first half. Ball spills free, almost back to the centre, and we'll find ourselves with another bounce. Any other moves?